I think we're all a little bit familiar with gray infrastructure, pipes and bridges and roads, but what is green infrastructure? Well, as we have uh, gotten more urbanized in our urban environments, we've put a whole lot of impervious surface down, and so water can't percolate and infiltrate down into the ground like it used to. Well, green infrastructure helps us to manage stormwater, so rain that falls down on the ground, more in the way that we used to be able to before we put all the impervious surface down. You know, some people feel a little bit like we shouldn't talk about trees as anything but their own spirits and their own beautiful things, but actually trees are so wonderful. They're workhorses. They work 24-7 for us, doing all sorts of what we call ecosystem services, or they provide environmental benefits. Uh, what is of interest to the Environmental Services Bureau, because we are responsible for stormwater in the city, stormwater management, is that trees act like sponges. They intercept stormwater as it falls down, rainwater as it falls down, but they also infiltrate that water down into the ground. So we get a job of work on both ends, uh, with the tree helping us to keep stormwater off of our gray infrastructure systems. I work with the Watershed Revegetation Program in the Environmental Services, specifically with the Urban Tree Canopy Program. And we exist to get trees planted and also to do outreach and education to help people we plant with to love their trees and help them to grow big, strong, beautiful, and live long lives so that they can manage lots and lots of stormwater. We have planted in the last five years 32,200 trees with our partners. We're super proud of that. How many trees will we plant? We hope at least that many more. We hope to continue to be a presence, planting trees and helping people to, to get trees planted and to take care of trees for the foreseeable future. Trees are a wonderful solution, but you can't always plant a tree somewhere. And in an urban environment, you know, sometimes we have these enormous buildings with huge roofs, eco-roof, genius solution, where you can't have a tree in the middle of the building, you can have an eco-roof. Well, an eco-roof operates uh, as a sustainable alternative to a conventional roof. Every time water hits that roof, it immediately has to find a place to go. And eventually that runoff finds its way to the streets and parking lots um, that have pollutants on them or are maybe higher temperatures. It's what an eco-roof does is it grabs that water and it holds on to it. And about half that water evaporates back into the air and the other half leaves the roof at a slower rate. And that helps our pipe systems, that helps our stream systems. Um, it's an all around good tool to reduce the footprint of a building. There are a lot of reasons why. I mean, when you look at a place like this, it's just a beautiful thing to add to your building. And when you think about the skyline of the city with that many different eco-roofs in the city, we're really bringing life to the skyline and changing the way that a building interacts with a watershed. I think when you look at uh, the way that an ecosystem works, it's all about connectivity, it's all about tying together um, corridors, and uh, the city works as a system. And what an eco-roof does is it actually uh, turns an, an area that's normally without life on it and it creates it, it turns it into a resource. And we're also providing habitat for pollinators. We're also uh, cooling the city and we're also making the city less impervious. Less hardscape in the city means healthier city and healthier watersheds. A rain garden is essentially a landscape depression made up of rock, soil, native plants where we pipe the roof water into. It creates a place for the water to be detained treated, clean, cleaned by the plants and soil, and then infiltrate into the ground. It also can be a significant landscape amenity to the site. BES's stormwater retrofit program works with private property owners to install green infrastructure projects, stormwater retrofit facilities. At the New Day School, we've installed four rain gardens that allow us to manage 4,000 square feet of the building behind me. It's all detained in the rain gardens and allowed to infiltrate in through the plants and soil. They also removed about 7,500 square feet of asphalt parking lot. It's now a garden and play area for the children. The ideas were just mimicking the natural system that was in place originally. The closer we can get to the natural system, the closer we are to a less expensive, more sustainable solution. Well, we capture the water as it flows down the curb. So there's already a system in place. It was created many years ago when this neighborhood was built. We're just simply intercepting the water before it hits the inlet at the end of the street. So the water flows down the curb, in through an inlet, and then travels the distance of the facility. And if there's too much water, then it overflows out again and into the inlet. Most storms can be handled right here. And even if it does overflow, we still solve the major flooding issue. We're studying the habitat potential of these for pollinators and birds. Um, but yes, we think that we're now beginning to study whether we can create corridors 
and maybe link together our green street facilities with our eco roofs, with our natural areas, with all those different types of elements knitted together to help that habitat element get from one place to another. I think that it's sustainable in terms of, again, we're using the natural system to do the work. It's sustainable in that it involves community and community comes together. We have a Green Street Steward program where we reach out to individuals and say, would you like to adopt this Green Street? It teaches a bigger lesson about what's important in our urban environment. So I think that these are, are sustainable, definitely.